Um, so it started about 10 years ago when I had this ambition to travel to China without taking an aeroplane as a way to minimise my carbon footprint because I was fascinated by these eco-cities and sustainability going on in Shanghai. Um, so with this newfound passion of um, slow travel, I then set myself up a job in Australia and decided to get there again without taking an aeroplane. And it was then, when I was 21, that I took a boat around the world from the UK to Australia and saw all of these changes that were happening in our ocean, which until then I really wasn't aware of. Um, and so one of those big ones was plastic pollution, these areas in the Pacific where plastic is accumulating, um, and also the collapse in fisheries and the sea level rise and the changes in ocean chemistry. And I really wanted to learn more about it and also um, expose these issues to other people too, to get scientists, give them access to the ocean, um, to get journalists and artists and filmmakers and educators, people out to see these issues so they could actually bring their findings back to land and ultimately create change. And so that's when Pangaea was born, really, um, on this vessel Sea Dragon, using that as a mechanism to connect people and the ocean. And so every week or every month, you know, there's a new expedition with a new group of 14 people who are going out to access the ocean, looking at whether it's plastic pollution or something else like fisheries and coral reef health. Um, so that's still going on, still running. Um, we've launched another programme called X Expedition, um, which is a series of all women's voyages, looking specifically at the small plastic and also the toxic implication of this type of pollution in our ocean. So there we're looking at these chemicals that are involved in the production of plastic and also um, pollutants like pesticides um, that end up in the ocean um, and what potential harm they could cause to the food chain and particularly us. And what I have found is that the more time I spend at sea, the more I realise that the solutions to all these challenges, they start on land because that is also where the problem begins. So just looking at plastic itself, um, I went on to find out that we use in the world um, 60,000 plastic bags every three seconds. And that number just astounded me. And also the realisation that those bags, they get used once, maybe twice, probably three times at best, and then they're thrown away. And that's the thing about plastic, is it's this amazing material because it's designed to last forever and ever. And yet we go and make things like plastic bags and other disposable packaging that's designed to be used just once and then thrown away. And that mismatch of material science and product design puts us in the situation of having huge amounts of waste plastic that no longer has any use or value. And much of that plastic, you know, I mean, a bit of it can be recycled. Around 5% of the plastic that we use actually ends up getting recycled, mostly because plastic is really a term that we give to hundreds of different materials all have different chemical structures that give them the amazing different properties that we know plastic to have. Um, but of course it's very hard to then recycle um, those products that have many different chemical structures within them. Um, hence that number 5% is lower than we would expect. Um, and then much of the rest of that, that waste material um, goes into landfill um, but a staggering proportion of it, around 8 million tonnes per mm. year of plastic, leaves our land, runs down rivers, down streams and sewers, um, and everything runs downhill to the ocean. And so we're finding that plastic, about 80% of the plastic in the ocean is that 8 million tonnes coming from land. Um, it then gets out into the ocean um, and then comes into contact with these great big ocean currents. Um, and gets basically pulled out into these central ocean areas that we call gyres, the accumulation zones of all this plastic. And so that's really what we spent the last five or six years studying on Sea Dragon, um, is going out to these gyres to understand how much plastic is there, you know, how is it breaking down, is there a way that we can clean it up, and trying to answer some of these quite challenging questions. I mean, one of the easiest things that everybody could just do today would be thinking about their single-use plastic consumption. So I'm not talking about everything and anything that's made of plastic, because that's pretty much impossible um, if you want to live a, a sort of modern, you know, 21st century life. 
Um, but first, just think about the things that are disposable. Something that's going to be in your life for 10 minutes, an hour or a day. Things like a plastic bag, a plastic water bottle, packaging that you don't really need. You know, your life's not going to change or be dependent um, on not having it. And if we can eliminate that, that's going to go a really, really long way to solving the problem because that is mostly the type of plastic that we find um, in the middle of the ocean. Um, and then in addition to that, it's a case of really spreading the message. I mean, getting other people to really care about, um, about our ocean, how important a healthy ocean to this planet is, um, is something that, I mean, I grew up loving the ocean and it took me to my mid twenties to really understand how important a healthy ocean is for our planet. The fact that over half of the oxygen in the air that we breathe comes from the phytoplankton in the ocean. You know, something that I just never knew um, and that 90% of all living things on this planet are actually aquatic. Um, and so it's so vital to our survival. Um, and, and it's also just so amazing. You know, for me, it's a place of, um, of joy, of peace, um, and just, you know, a, a place that's so, so special. Um, it comes with, with all of those amazing feelings, that moment that you just immerse yourself um, in a beautiful turquoise ocean. Um, I couldn't imagine uh, living on a planet that has a completely polluted ocean.